Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in the series. In this video I will take up the topic of exponential growth and decay. And to begin I will show you the uh, formula that goes with these kinds of problems and then we'll talk about where the formula comes from. Uh, following this we'll take a look at a few word problems that use this formula in their solution. The formula that goes with exponential growth and decay can always be written in this form. A n is equal to 1 plus r to the power of n times a0. In this formula, a0 is the initial value of some quantity. r is the rate of change per term. So for example, every year, you add 20% of the amount that you had at the beginning of that year. N is the number of terms. So for example, if you add interest once every year, if two years go by, then the number of terms will be two. If three years go by, the number of terms will be three, and so on. And a n is the final value of that quantity after n terms go by. Now let me explain in more detail uh, what all of these quantities mean and, uh, and where the formula comes from. And I will do that in the context of a word problem. Uh, so with, with this word problem, number one, you invest $2,500 at 3.5% per year and it's compounded annually. What will your balance be after three years? Now, of course, 3.5% per year means that the money that you invested will grow at this rate. Every year, we add 3.5% of the money that you had at the beginning of that year. And compounded annually means that uh, starting in the second and the third and the fourth years and so on, starting in the second year, uh, what we'll do is we find 3.5% of the money that you had at the beginning of that year, including any interests that you earned. Uh, that's what we call compounded interest. Now, compound interest is different from simple interest. With simple interest, if you are receiving, let's say, 3.5% per year, every year you receive 3.5% of the very original amount of money that you invested, of the 2,500. With compound interest, every year you get 3.5% of the total amount of money that you had at the beginning of that year, including any interests that you might have earned. Now for this problem, if we take a look at how we can solve this problem, uh, let's say n is the number of terms, in this case the number of years that go by. Uh, a n is the money that you will have at the end of that term. So if n is 1, that would mean 1 year has gone by. And a1 would be the amount of money that you have at the end of year 1. And if n is 2, that means 2 years have gone by. Then we will have a2 here, which means the amount of money that you will have at the end of year 2, and so on. So with uh, n being 0, that means we haven't really started the investment. We just put the money into the account. Uh, we have 2,500. That's the initial amount. Now that's your a0. Uh, in the in the problem in the in the equations that we had here, a0 is the initial value of the quantity. In this case, it's the 2,500 dollars that you invested. Okay. Now after one year, we earn 103.5 percent of the money that we invested. Uh, this is similar to a grand total kind of a problem when we discussed uh, tax and discount problems with grand total when we uh, multiplied the price uh, by 1.13 uh, if your rate of tax is let's say 13 percent uh, and in this case it's 3.5 percent so we multiply the initial amount by 103.5 percent which is converted to a decimal and so we have 1.003 and we can write this down as 1.035 to the power of 1 times 2,500. I'll tell you about why we put the 1 down very, uh, very soon. Now, let's say another year goes by. Now, we're going to earn 103.5% of this amount. 
of the amount that we had at the end of uh, year one. Uh, so for year two, at the end of year two, we get 103.5% uh, of the money that we had at the end of year one. And you notice that because we are multiplying by another 1.035, uh, uh, we end up with 1.035 to the power of 2 multiplied by 2,500, uh, or again, the initial amount. Now, when year 3 comes, we multiply the amount that we had in year 2 at the end of year 2. That's 1.035 to the power of 2 times 2,500, which is this piece. And we uh, multiply that by 103.5%. And of course, if we combine the 1.035s, we'll end up with 1.035 to the power of 3 times 2,500. And this can continue on in this manner. But by now, we notice some kind of pattern. You notice that when uh, at the end of year 1, we had 1.035 to the power of 1. At the end of year 2, we had 1.035 times uh, to the power of 2. At the end of year 3, we had 1.035 to the power of 3. So it seems like the exponent of 1.035 uh, sort of uh, it goes up uh, by 1 uh, as, as the number of years go up by 1. And in fact, its value is equal to the number of terms, in this case, the number of years that have gone by. And this uh, brings us to the formula. Uh, in this formula, if you take a look at what we've got here, a n is of course the amount of money that you have at, at the end of the nth term and uh, and that would be the a n over here and its value is equal to what we have down here the 1.035 comes from 100% plus 3.5% and that is the 1 plus r within brackets it goes to the power of n of course this number this ex this exponent is the same as n so we have n, and then we multiply this by the initial investment, which is $2,500. Okay, going back to the problem, you invest $2,500 at 3.5% per year compounded annually. What will your balance be after three years? Now, we're going to use the formula then. Uh, with Pn equals 1 plus r to the power of n times P0. Now in this problem, we've made a switch uh, from An and A0 to Pn and P0. And you should uh, feel comfortable with that because depending on the context, uh, depending on what the actual quantity is that's growing or diminishing, uh, the, the letter is, is changed. Uh, for, for investment, we usually use the letter P for principal. Uh, for radiation problems, when we talk about how mass reduces, we'll be using M and also M0. In place of uh, P, we'll use M for mass. So Pn is equal to 1 plus R to the power of N times P0. And of course, uh, all the values on the right side are given, and we need to replace these variables with the given values and then work out the expression. And we end up with P3, of course, because this is after three years. And this is equal to 1 plus 0 0.035 to the power of 3 multiplied by the initial amount, which is 2,500. We work out the brackets. Raise 1.035 to the power of 3. And then multiply by 2,500. And at the end of three years, we will have $2,771.79. Okay, now, uh, in the given formula that we had, uh, we can make any one of the variables unknown. Uh, and in, this, uh, in the case of this problem, uh, what, uh, what the unknown is, is the initial investment. The problem says, how much should I invest at 4.5% per year annual compound interest to end up with $10,000 after five years? Uh, and you notice that this is a very practical problem too. In fact, uh, with this problem, like most problems, uh, all, of the, all of the variables, any of the variables can be unknown, and the problem is a very practical kind of a problem. So in this case, I would like to have $10,000 after five years, and I would like to do some investment today so that in five years I will have the $10,000. Uh, 
and the question is if I can find a way to invest my money at 4.5% per year compounded annually, uh, then how much should I invest now? So that in five years I will have $10,000. We start with the formula. Pn is equal to 1 plus r to the power of n times p0. And in this case, p0 is missing. We know Pn. Pn will be the 10,000 that I want to get at the end. P0 is missing. We solve the equation for P0. Switch sides. Solve for the factor that contains the unknown. And now we put the given values into the formula. Pn is $10,000. Rate of interest is 4.5%, which is 0 0.045. We work out the divisor and then divide. And so I need to put uh, $8,024.51 so that in five years I will have $10,000. Keep in mind that the amount of money that you put in is a function of the interest rate. Okay, problem three. Now, this time the rate of interest is unknown. I know how much I want to invest. I know how much I want to get at the end and I know how long I want to wait. Uh, and I would like to know what rate of interest I should use. What annual rate of interest should, should we invest $2,000 uh, at so that after 10 years we have $3,000 assuming that interest is compounded annually. Start with the formula. And this time R is unknown. Rearrange the formula and solve for R. Switch sides. Solve for the factor that contains the unknown. And now, solving for r means we are solving for the base. And this requires that we use roots. Move one over. And now we put the values in. With pn being $3,000, the initial investment is $2,000, and n is 10 years. Work out term number one, and then subtract. And so we will have to uh, invest the money at, uh, at a rate of 4.138% per year. Problem number four. Now this time, N is missing. How long will it take for $5,000 to grow to $7,500 if the money is invested at 0.35% per month, compounded monthly? Uh, and uh, you notice that this time I went from uh, year and, uh, and annual compounding to uh, per month and also monthly compounding. So long as the time units are the same, the problem, the same formula applies. Pn equals 1 plus r to the power of n times p0. We solve for n. Switch sides. Solve for the factor that contains the unknown. And now, because we are solving for an exponent, we use logarithms. Put the given values in. Now divide and take the log. Now the question is how do we take this log because the log button on a typical calculator only does log to the base 10. And as I mentioned in an earlier video, uh, there is a formula that we can use to change the base. If you're seeking to find log to the base b of a number such as v, you can change your base from b to n if you perform this division log to the base n of v divided by log to the base n of b. Now, because we want to be able to use the log button on the calculator, the base has to be 10. So we pick 10 for n. And 10 doesn't have to be written down. So log to any base of a value such as v becomes log of v divided by log of b. And we're going to use that to solve this problem. We find log of 1.5 and then divide that by log 
and if you try it you'll find that n becomes 116 terms in this case because one term is one month uh, we're talking about 116 months okay, and just to show you that the problems don't have to be money problems here's a problem with the same numbers that are used in problem number one uh, but the context is different 2,500 people live in a neighborhood whose population is growing at a rate of 3.5% per year. At this rate, how many people are expected to live in this neighborhood in three years? Um, my apologies for that copy and paste. Okay, so we put down the formula and I actually let you go through the solution. Uh, 1 plus r to the power of n times p0 uh, with the rate of interest being 3.5%. We are seeking the population after three years and the initial population is 2,500 people. Okay, everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. In the next video, I will take up the topic of radiation.